What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to this channel, I am Bull Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're at the brand new 2025 Nissan Kicks, courtesy of Younger Nissan in Frederick, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today, we're at the new Kicks because this has been completely redesigned for the 2025 model year. You gotta love it. I love the new design. You got more power for this year as well. And all-wheel drive is actually available for the first time ever now on the kicks as well and we got all-wheel drive too so that's pretty sticking cool so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so in typical Nissan fashion, there are a few different trim levels for the 2025 kicks. First one being the S starting at $21,830, SV for $23,680, and lastly the SR for $26,180. And in case you were curious, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive variant. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the new kicks is going to be the same. Powering the new kicks here is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 141 horsepower at 6,000 rpm which by the way is a 19 horsepower bump from the 2024 model year that 140 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 35 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration here in the kicks i did want to mention to you guys the drive drive modes it is labeled d mode it's located just to the right of the shifter drive modes will include sport standard eco and snow adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity i so, but now haven't got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the kicks here to the test and uh, let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right in three two one yep It's, it's kind of slow, but I will say there was a lot of get up and go, a lot of initial pep when I initially hit the gas, which is kind of refreshing because everything I feel like I've been driving lately has been turbocharged. You always got that turbo lag, but you don't have that with the kicks. It's actually going to be probably a really good car for people just zipping around city streets because you got that initial pep right off the bat. The gas pedal is actually pretty darn sensitive, which is a good thing because it makes it a little more fun. So I actually don't mind that acceleration, but having said that, it's not the quickest thing in the world. It's probably just something you got to get used to and you will get used to it. So anyways, it gets the job done, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, four wheel disc brakes do come standard. As far as braking feel goes, it's incredible. Dang, this thing bites. So a lot of times you will find soft braking feels in compact SUVs, but this one actually is on the firmer side of things. It does instantly bring you to a stop. So braking feels actually pretty darn good in this thing. The touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, semi-independent torsion beam rear axle. Front and rear stabilizer bars actually for all trim levels as well. As far as steering feel goes, it's actually okay. It's not the firmest steering feel in existence, but it's not really a super loose steering feel either. It's pretty much as you would expect the kicks to handle like and have the steering feel like. So um, nothing crazy there. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been decent for what this vehicle is. I don't personally have any issues with the ride quality in this thing. Uh, cabin noise, you do tend to hear a little bit of the road noise. I will say that you guys can probably hear them going over a bridge right now, but there's a little bit of road noise there, but it's nothing that would bother me again. And touching our rear visibility, that is brilliant. Because of the boxier shape of this SUV, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So visibility is certainly 100% on point, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Nissan Kicks. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2025 Nissan Kicks finished in Aspen White Tricoat. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today. But again, this one has been completely redesigned for 2025, a boxier style. The designer actually claims that the design was influenced by sneakers. Who would have thought with a name like the Kicks, of course. And you do have some brighter colors for 2025, I've noticed as well, which is definitely a good thing. Yeah, for what this vehicle is, at least. I love bright colors on cars but anyways let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number three indicating that the new kicks is built and assembled 
in Mexico, believe it or not. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front to the sides. Full LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. Even the S trim gets that brightest illumination at night. You gotta love that. You do get the automatic feature with that. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So that is pretty stick and cool. And then if you were to go with the SR trim level, only you will also get led fog lights down below and to go along with that you're going to get some sr badging found in the front grille as well but definitely a good look to the front end here definitely overall an amazing new look for the kicks without a doubt i think this thing is going to sell a ton wait till we get to the back but anyways let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right and some analysis we are around to the side of this one first thing i want to mention is there are some two-toned roof colors available in case you were interested in that floating roof line you guys can see the c pillar distinguishing itself uh the roof from the rest of the body another thing i want to show you guys though is there is some kicks kind of lettering found on that C pillar. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hopefully you can, but it is there. Just take my word for it. Kix is etched into that. Taking a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for the SR all wheel drive. And then you're gonna get integrated turn signals for the SR trim level, whether it be front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers for the S, 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the SV. And yes, those are alloy wheels. We got a premium package with us here today. So you actually can get the SV with alloy wheels if you wanted it. And then 19 inch aluminum alloys for that SR trim level. But that pretty much rounds out the side. I think it looks amazing. Let's now go ahead and swing around to my favorite part, which is the back. All right, so this is the part that looks like nothing else on the road right now, specifically the taillights I am in love with. But anyways, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. And again, LED taillights coming standard. They look amazing in the back there. Definitely a very unique look to them, like nothing else. Got that all wheel drive badging if the kicks that you were looking at is equipped with all wheel drive at least. And then just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet it is tucked away underneath you guys can see that underneath on the driver's side there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the kicks, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. Just make sure the kicks is unlocked and then there is a rubberized button on the back. You just simply press that in and lift up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to differ actually, believe it or not, between the trim levels. So you're gonna find 30 cubic feet for the S trim level, 29.2 cubic feet for the SV front wheel drive and SR front wheel drive, and then 23.9 cubic feet for the all wheel drive model. So did want to kind of differentiate between that, but if that was not enough space, there is of course a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. You do have some grocery bag hooks back there, which is pretty nice to see. You also have some tie down anchors, of course, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find some in-floor storage actually, along with a tire inflator kit as opposed to the spare tire, but decent amount of in-floor storage in there. You could probably put a nice scraper or really whatever you want to put back there, but decent amount of space. So it was a good bit of in-floor storage. So then making our way up to the rear leg room, that comes in at 34.5 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. Uh, no rear ventilation, no USB charging ports, and no rear center armrest with cup holders, unfortunately. But those are typically features that you don't often find in the competition either. So it's pretty standard for this segment. I'll just put it that way. But then making our way up to the front seats, cloth seating is going to be had with the S trim level premium cloth for the SV that we have today. And then a leatherette finish for the S R trim level. Manually adjustable front seats coming standard for all trims across the board. Heated front seats then are going to be optional for the SV and SR. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was actually fine. Nothing crazy. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't power adjustable or anything like that. And uh, the bolsters aren't the thickest, but 
it certainly gets the job done. I didn't have any issues in my short little test drive here today. I'll just put it that way. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It's going to be wrapped in urethane for the S and SV trims and then leather wrapped for the SR trim level. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. It actually is a really nice looking key. Got your Nissan logo all the way to the top, lock and then unlock, of course. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there and so once started up gauges are going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with so for example the s and the sv is going to give you a seven inch digital cluster however the sr is going to give you a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster but overall the gauges look pretty darn good so you got your tachometer all the way to your left speedometer a very big digital speedometer all the way to your right fuel information is all the way to your right as well and speaking of fuel information we have 304 miles until we hit empty here i actually just gassed it up completely before i even left Left. and uh, the price to fill up a tank when it is zero miles left until empty is 37 bucks which is definitely respectable in this day and age so no issues there it's definitely pretty nice with gas prices what they are uh, you got your outside temperature all the way to the top as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want and uh, digital gauges look absolutely amazing I think it looks pretty sporty actually so big fan of that now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality dual pane panoramic roof is going to be optional with the SV and SR an option that we don't have with us here today auto dimming rear view mirror is going to come with an electronics package if you wanted that but i think a cool little feature about our particular spec of the kicks that we have with us here today is the fact that the seat fabric this premium cloth has been brought up just underneath the infotainment screen uh so that's pretty cool it's a nice little feel to it kind of makes it feel more homey almost so it's something different that you don't often see on other manufacturers so i was kind of a big fan of that nice use of a uh, texturized finish found around the uh, power window buttons here i like that as well silver door handles nice finish to that a lot of times people leave that in matte black plastic so they went above and beyond there just in front of the uh, shifter here you have a wireless phone charger actually that's pretty cool just beside that electromechanical parking brake another nice texture texturized finish surrounding the shifter like I was just mentioning to you guys around the power window buttons got your couple cup holders behind that within the center armrest one of the smallest little center armrest storage cubbies I have ever seen and a 12 volt power outlet in there as well so not a ton of space in there but I suppose it gets the job done. But so now let's go ahead and take a look at this infotainment screen because it looks like Nissan did an amazing job with this. So let's check it out here. Seven inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the S, but then you got a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display for the SV and the SR. You get Bluetooth and audio streaming with that. You get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. However, with the 12.3 inch screen, you get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So that's pretty stinking cool. You got a nice little clock there to the right. If you swipe to the right, you got more information as well got your radio information looks like up there there's a little information icon for different notifications of course your radio information as well so when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them one of them comes standard though so what I mean by that is four speakers actually come standard for all trim levels however there is an optional 10 speaker Bose sound system so if you're really into music it's available for you but four speakers does come standard so let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> was made in mexico after all that's the station that was turned on when i turned it on so yeah it, it was it was four speakers i mean it's not that bad honestly it's a little better than i expected for a four speaker sound system but um it's still four speakers in the end so not a crazy amount of bass of course but it was decent clarity i will say that that was sirius xm as well so that was pretty good but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the kicks in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard for all trim levels across the board the surround view monitor then is going to come with the sr trim level only but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so let me start by saying it's not yet rated by iihs because it's too new at this point but front side side curtain airbags do come standard you got driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks type pressure monitoring system but also coming standard brake assist there's hill start assist blind spot warning which was really convenient here my short little test drive lane departure warning driver attention alert rear parking sensors coming standard that's crazy considering the price point and adaptive cruise control then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, 
of the kicks priced right. That's the first thing I want to mention. This is incredibly affordable and you get a good bit for what that price point is as well. So really an incredible value overall. Also, I love the fact that all wheel drive is available because not all the competition can say that. You can't say that with the Kia Soul or the Hyundai Venue, for example. So that's pretty sick and cool. Wonderful new design. Love the design of this. It definitely looks like something that you could zip around city streets in Japan with. So I was a big fan of that. Although I do wish it was built and assembled in Japan instead of Mexico. Just because JDM cars are just cooler in my book. The other thing I think I would change is I would add a uh, spare tire in the back as opposed to the fix the flat. I personally prefer the spare tire, but maybe that's just me. But then on the positive side of things, I do like that this isn't turbocharged because so many vehicles these days are and you get that turbo lag, but you also have worse reliability. And the fact that this is a naturally aspirated four cylinder, in my book, that's a good thing because that means this thing is bound to last a lot longer than its turbocharged counterparts. I'm a big fan of it for that reason. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new kicks here in the comments section below. I love reading your comments, but that's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews. That is what we do here in this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Yeah.